So welcome back. We're still talking about wounds, healing and tissue repair. This is the third section in which we'll talk about acute wounds. The section has been divided into two parts. The first part will deal with the compartment syndrome and the second with high pressure injection injuries. So let's get into compartment syndromes. So compartment syndromes are conditions in which increased pressure within one of the body compartment results in insufficient blood supply to tissues within that space. So first of all, you need to understand what a compartment syndrome is. For understanding compartment syndrome, visualize a compartment. Um, let's say a box. There's a box and a box has a specific volume. Now, if you increase the pressure on that box, there's a certain amount, the, the volume can compress itself to a certain limit. When the pressure is further increased, any, um, any lumen in the volume might be compressed and the lumen might be occluded. Now, come back to your leg, the human leg. The human leg has been divided into various compartments. So these compartments are limited spaces into which muscles, nerves and vessels are running. So when a lot of pressure is being applied to these compartments externally or internally, what happens? The patency of the vessels, uh, it is lost. As a result of loss of this patency, uh, there's insufficient blood flow to the tissues within that space. So let's see how these occurs. It typically occurs in the lower limb injuries. Here you can see there are two deep compartments, the deep posterior compartment in um, uh, the superficial posterior compartment in blue, the deep posterior compartment in red. Now we have the anterior compartment in yellow and the lateral compartment in green. These are the four compartments of the human leg. Now, whenever the pressure increases within the one of these body compartments, the patency of the blood vessels is lost. As a result, there's hypoxia in that compartment and there's loss of tissue. If um, it is a time sensitive matter and the loss of tissue can occur if uh, you do not do something in time. So it is characterized by severe pain. The pain is very severe and the pain is there on passive movement of the affected muscle compartments. Distal to this compartment, there's sensory disturbance and there's absence of pulses distally. Now this is a very late sign. Absence of a pulse distally, that is a very late and that is a very dangerous sign. At this point in time, the viability of the organ or the viability of the leg might have already been lost. So it can occur with an open injury if the wound does not extend into an affected compartment. Say there's injury in the leg and you're suspecting compart um, uh, and this injury is an open injury. You should still suspect compartment syndrome if there's uh, severe pain in the leg because that injury might not be extended into a specific compartment since there are four compartments in the leg one of the compartments might uh, the injury might not be extending into and as a result uh, the compartment syndrome might develop in that compartment now how do you examine a patient with compartment syndrome the compartment pressures um, should be measured using pressure monitor and catheter placed in the muscle compartment. If pressure is more than 30 millimeter of mercury with appropriate signs and symptoms, you should perform a fasciotomy. So why is 30 millimeter of mercury important? It is the pressure at which the patency of the vessels is lost. So a pressure greater than 30 millimeter of mercury or almost reaching 30 millimeter of mercury with appropriate signs and symptoms that is severe pain, pain on flexion, absence of distal pulses, uh, rock hard limb, you should always move for fasciotomy. So what is fasciotomy? Here you can see this is fasciotomy. Uh, it involves a deep muscle, uh, it involves incising the deep muscle fascia. Here you can see 
the deep muscle fascia has been excised it is best carried out via longitudinal incisions of the skin fat and fascia so what you do is you perform longitudinal incisions on the skin on the fat and on the fascia to reach the muscle compartment and finally excise the deep muscle fascia now the muscle can be seen bulging out through the opening here you can see the muscle is bulging out through the opening now the lower limb can <coughs> be decompressed with the help of two incisions a uh, lateral to subcutaneous border of the tibia so you palpate for the subcutaneous border of the tibia and you produce two lateral incisions and the two incisions which lie lateral to the subcutaneous border of the tibia these incisions are sufficient to decompress the leg now it gives access to the two posterior compartments and to the anterior compartment and also to the lateral compartment so this is what you need to do always have a high clinical suspicion now when the pressure is greater than 30 and the signs and symptoms proceed for fasciotomy if you do not do fasciotomy you lose the leg of your patient now let's talk about high pressure injection injuries now the use of high pressure devices can cause extensive close injuries through small entry wounds so initially you can see there's a small hole it it progresses to a bigger injury that can often progress to a bad outcome even with treatment what happens in pressure injury there is usually a small entry point from that small entry point whatever material was being inserted with, uh, with pressure uh, is inserted into the fascial planes of the human body now it goes to a lot it travels a lot of distance within the human body and this substance which is which was being sprayed with pressure usually is uh, delirious for the human body and it is toxic for the human body so it has to be removed so that the body can um, repair and heal itself now what is the treatment of this high pressure injury now the treatment is surgical you need wide exposure the removal of toxic substance and thorough debridement so the picture does not look good what you need to do you need to uh, take your patient to surgery again manage your patient according to atls protocol after that after informed consent you need to take your patient to your operating room in your operating room you need to talk about uh, you need to perform a wide exposure after exposing it properly you need to remove the toxic substance try to remove it entirely and you need to perform thorough debridement because if any of the particles would remain they would uh, affect and they would necrose the surrounding area now pre operative x rays may help now amputation rates in these patients are usually over 45% this is because all of that toxic substance cannot be removed it's very difficult to remove all of the toxic substances in these patients so it is better to amputate uh, these patients and the rate of amputations is usually 45% so delayed or conservative treatment is inappropriate for high pressure injuries conservative treatment is not recommended always go for surgical treatment in these cases now this was all about this section in this section we talked about acute wounds the compartment syndrome and high pressure injuries these are clinically important facts i want you to remember i hope you like this for further such sections keep watching scardia.com